advertised last Friday, you saw the part one of the conversation on the effect of coronavirus on show business in Africa. We had resource people from across Africa, South Africa, Kenya, Nigeria, and Ghana. Today we have three people uh, joining us also representing Africa. We want to do the concluding part of the conversation on the way forward. Now that coronavirus is here, we are told to learn to live with it. Are we going to be going for shows with gloves on, with masks on, and with our PPs and all of that? What's the way forward for show business in Africa? Because the 1% that we are told that we contribute to the world is dwindling as a matter of fact. So joining us here in Ghana, uh, is our own Kiki Banson. He's the CEO of uh, Palm Media. He's a renowned uh, artist manager as well. He's touted to be the man behind the success of Rebecca Champo, known as Becca, who is an African star. And also connecting with us from Nigeria, we have Godwin Tom, uh, who is also a great talent manager. I must tell you that he's managed the likes of Whiskey, Davido, YJ, MI, Ice Prince, the list is continuous i'm sure uh, there are some more that you need to know about and then eddie hachike i need to take my time anytime i'm pronouncing eddie's name and eddie's connected with us from south africa and he is the chief executive of music in africa and organizer of assets and he's been doing this for over 10 years he's a huge brand when it comes to show business in africa thanks gentlemen for joining us thanks for thank you us. All right, so I'm going to you, uh, Godwin, because we ended the conversation with you not really telling me uh, what was going on in Nigeria. As of the time I was speaking to you last Friday, there were calls for audition for Big Brother Niger. A lot of things have happened afterwards. We've seen a huge African concert, uh, which had many Nigerian stars, of course, stars from Ghana were represented as well, and also from South Africa, Kenya as well. Now, does it mean that this is the way forward? We might as well do the virtual concerts and let to live with the virtual concert, virtual auditions, virtual everything. Is that what it's going to be for us henceforth? Um, partly, yes. Uh, mainly because there is a... It's our reality now. So you deal with your reality. Um, the... I think, yes, sometime this week in Abuja, um, another city here in Nigeria, there was a drive-in concert. Whoa. Um, where people drove, parked their cars, and actually tuned into a radio dial-in and listened to music from, I think, Style Plus, they played live. So those, you know, where we were forced to adjust. So I think it's, it's the reality until things go back to normal. Mm. And do you think the effect is the same? Uh, are, are sponsors coming on board? Are people buying into this idea? Is it the same? Of course, there are no physical touch and all that, contact and all that. But are we still getting the same effect? Well, I think in terms of sponsorship, the, the brands that are sensible will, will, will jump on uh, opportunities because I don't, we've never had a drive in concert in Nigeria. So uh, I think that. The, the sensible sponsors will be one who want to associate their brands with being, you know, forward thinking and innovative, uh, and it works in their interest if they if they start, if they jump on it as quickly as possible. Um, with regards to, you know, it not be if it's the same experience, it's, it's not. That's the reality. It's not the same experience, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, you don't want more people getting sick because we want to have fun. So we have to find the best means and the best ways to achieve this. Uh, let's go to Eddie, because Eddie told me that there was no possibility, as, as far as he was concerned, in South Africa, uh, when it comes to virtual concert, virtual awards and all that. I'm sure that this was an eye-opener for a lot of you guys in South Africa, because you had huge stars there. I saw Nasty C, uh, Bisuwa, Busuwa. Uh, also, we've seen uh, the likes of Shoma Josie. A lot of African stars from South Africa joined the, uh, the concert that happened on uh, the African Union Day. Even your president address Africans virtually uh, as a chairman of the African Union. Tell me, is, has this become an eye-opener for South Africans? Yeah, I think um, um, j just from where we left last, uh, last week, I wasn't necessarily saying that uh, there is no room for virtual concerts. What I was saying was that um, is that essentially um, it does provide uh, a means for people to enjoy music, but uh, generally the 
sentiment is that it's never going to replace what people are used to, which is um, live experiences. Um, but coming to your question, yes, um, we, we, we have a number of uh, events that are going virtual. Um, and really the situation here is that um, things are likely going to start picking up um, uh, towards the festive season. Um, and, and, and who knows, I think, I think a lot is kind of on a wait and see basis and we'll see what the next 30 days bring. Uh, already in South Africa, we are one gear down in terms of our lockdown. So we have a slightly um, uh, relaxed uh, lockdown and we anticipate that this will continue. And, 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 and naturally the, the festive season will we'll try to push through, we'll try to have uh, a little bit more uh, in terms of events and, and entertainment. So uh, that might bring some new changes. Before I go to Kiki, tell me uh, on the average, uh, can you estimate how much South Africa has lost in terms of uh, revenue you know, when it comes to the business that we do, which is entertainment or show business? I'm happy you asked that question and, and, and why is because we, we have been running, um, we did uh, conduct research um, to understand the financial impact of the pandemic on the African music sector as a whole. Um, and and we, we, we were focusing um, on two months uh, when uh, the, the outbreak um, really started to take its toll on the continent. So March and April, and we've got a report now that we are actually releasing now today. And uh, the, the figures are quite interesting. I think um, what I can say, the highlights is that um, everyone um, has reported to have lost uh, income. And, um, you know, artists, um, about 40% of our respondents, the, the, the individual professionals, these are musicians, session artists, sound artists, they're saying they've lost um, at least um, 1,000 to 5,000 in a space of 30 days to 60 days. So now we are almost three months after this, and, and, and we, we are seeing generally that the, the impact has been quite devastating with some organizations reporting losses of up to a million US dollars over a two month, um, a two month period. Um, so this is what we, we, we found out, but the, the figures are more interesting. And, uh, and, and, and interested people can and obviously find this on our website, musicinafrica.net. Okay, um, that means that we are looking at 1,000 to 5,000 US dollars. Initially, it didn't tell, I was thinking it was South African rand. So I was, I was waiting for you to finish uh, that. Yeah. Okay, so that's US dollars. Let's connect to Kiki. Kiki is into events as well. And uh, Kiki, are we likely to see a situation where we all will converge, uh, but with our shins on, our shin guards, or however we decide to put our PPEs, with our masks on, you know, and have a setting that uh, enables us to socially distance ourselves, yet enjoy a concert? Is that where we are heading to? Well, um, I, I, I don't see that as um, social dislike. I don't see, I can't phantom how you can be at the concert and social distance. Um, we, I think I would like to lay emphasis on the, what the future is supposed should look like or okay. may look like. The thing about live music, live performances and live concerts is that I personally don't think you can replace live concerts with any other thing. You can attempt to get as close as possible, but the the vibe, the, the essence of a live concert can only be a live concert. It's like trying to replace potatoes with paper. It just won't work. So whereas revenue is being lost on those who rely heavily on live concerts or otherwise, the other areas that are practically consumable by the fans, the music lovers, music buyers should be focused on and enhanced. We are in very unusual times, so it's all about innovation, 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 innovation. That's 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 my take on it. But going to um, a concert wrapped up in rubber, I, I don't see that happening. I don't even see people being interested in that. 
now talking about innovations, I'm sure that that's what we are all looking forward to. How else can we do this better beyond virtual concert, beyond everything being virtual? Is there any other way that we could adjust to still make an impact and still make some revenue in this industry? Well, yes. Again, the, all the, the, the players in it have to really begin to think out of the box. Um, I would also, I don't want to believe that we're going to be with coronavirus forever as a pandemic. It, it will have to stop at a point. Mm. How does, how can the arts um, community also contribute to making this go away as quickly as possible? So then the artists, um, the A-listers, the B-listers and what have you should also, by now in my view, be at the forefront of driving self-discipline with regards to social distancing and so on and so forth so that this thing can get away quickly i mean look there's 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 proof that you can uh, we can actually get rid of this virus without a vaccine or a therapeutic um, a, 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 a therapy for it by practicing changing our lives up and practicing you know a new way of life to combat this thing. while the vaccines and so on are still going on but the musicians who are at home now, unfortunately, most of them are not busy now, should be at the forefront of getting their fans and their lovers to do what will be proper to kick this thing out as soon as possible so that things can get back to normal while the innovation and the innovative thinking is going. Well, well, these... Some of them think that they deserve to be paid. They say they cannot do this for free. And so if you want me to use my status, uh, you know, to educate, to spearhead uh, the conversation, then pay me some money uh, so that I can also be comfortable whilst going about it. <laughs> well, I, 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 guess, <laughs> I guess my brother and I understand why we are laughing, but uh, we probably won't say this. TV, but it's an individual thing. Um, the, the the thing is, look, if you want to stay at home and not contribute to a, a, a movement that will get you back to work quickly, and you want to be paid for that, it's it's it's, it's an individual thing. But I don't um, advocate for that. I oh. think that she must be all hands on deck to get this thing done. I hope they hear everybody you. Everybody who has a voice, everybody who has reached to use it. Because without the people back on the streets, back at work, without the people feeling comfortable to come to your concert, nobody's coming. Mm. I hope they hear this advice from Kiki. But also, um, <laughs> just following up on what Kiki said, Godwin, do you think that if coronavirus becomes history or doesn't become a pandemic anymore, do you think that this business will remain same? Because some people are beginning to get used to staying indoors, one. They are beginning to get used to all the things on the internet. Are you sure that we can revive the entertainment industry beyond coronavirus? I, I, I think things will go back to normal when this is over. The reason why I believe this is because people are staying at home because they have to. Uh, in every society, we have introverts and we have extroverts. There are people who want to go out, who want to interact with people. Um, I have a client who's, who's currently uh, running a, a campaign uh, for uh, people who are going through a depression during this period because there are a lot of people who are stuck at home and have no escape and they're not being checked on. They don't have the ability to visit friends. So people are looking for ways to go out they're, they're at home because they have to be home um I, I i mean just to add also to what kiki was saying um there is a if you want thing we we as musicians can't necessarily we're not the ones who will come up with the vaccine or any of the uh medical solutions to the problem but we can we can our clients our artists musicians actors are responsible they should be responsible enough to contribute to the to the messaging of safe distancing and 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 you know the necessary healthy health precautions to keep people safe so that they can come at you come back to your to your shows when everything is better. I must also add, since we're talking about the best ways to bounce back, in terms of finding solutions, I think 
artists need to start collecting data they need to start engaging their audience they've you we've had audiences at home for two to three months now and it would be a catastrophe if artists are not figuring out who their actual fans are at this point um there's 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 a lot of there's so many ways to do this i have clients who have been collecting data for a while and have been engaging their fans on very very private exclusive online platforms for them they've just generally kept that i personally i'm not a musician but i i've been running educational programs for the last four to five years in nigeria and i have built a database of people who are interested in my programs so during this pandemic i've made money in consultancy services in uh, group sessions um so i mean if i can do it i believe the artists can do it so if you if you have one million followers two million followers and you're not able to sell anything to two thousand of them we need to check there's a big problem there so i think while we're trying to figure out how we adjust to this to these changes we need to start looking at artists identifying who their fans are and figuring out how do i sell something there are artists who should be selling guitar lessons to some of their fans to say look i'm a guitarist learn to play the guitar with me for some people it's it's a dream come true i get a chance to get an exclusive session with this artist i mean there are many things that we could do to help the artists generate money if they want to get paid for their time contributing to society that that raises too many questions about their interest in in nation building and their interest in even making money because sometimes by creating a solution it opens a door for you to do relevance and funds and wealth so i i think moving forward in terms of solutions and finding ways to how we can solve the problem artists need to start identifying oh um okay Okay, uh, quickly, we have seen people like uh, Tim Godfrey and some others decide to uh, use the season, a season to scout for talent, uh, engage in some form of reality show via the internet. Um, I, I've been wondering whether that is also another way to get yourself busy and getting to reach out again to your fan base. It's many things. It's many things. It's some people are thinking ahead some people are realizing that the pandemic is not going to last forever and so they must prepare themselves for the for after the pandemic uh some people are just staying busy to be honest some people are using this as an opportunity to right so it depends on the motive behind what they're doing but there are many reasons why people are doing what they're doing i can't speak on their behalf okay I, I know that okay it's great opportunity it's great opportunities for people I'll come back to you quickly because I want us to look at a sector that a lot of people don't seem to be concerned about, the movie sector. Um, South Africa also is rich when it comes to movies. There are series that we watch on social media, on television, big ones, of course, which were produced in South Africa. Would you be able to tell me, Eddie, uh, how that sector is faring now? I know that major productions, you know, have been called off, but are you still able to tell some way, somehow, if anything is happening? Because it looks like everything is on stream now. Yes. Um, I mean, I would love to tell you more uh, intimate details about that industry, but it simply is not my my particular, let's say, uh, field. Mm. Um, but however, you know, the 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 um, impact has generally been the same on all all um, subsectors of the arts um, sector, and um, so. Um, right after lockdown you know it was anticipated and it did happen um a lot of um low cost of these productions were not able to continue um no, so they were either you know suspending their you know uh, airing new shows and kind of just finding ways to just keep on um filling those tv slots um so you know generally there was a, a time when nothing was happening um, but now pe things are starting to to um, to slowly come back. Um, productions um, I think are, are getting now permits or you know like 
you know, just author, authorizations to start shooting again and to start uh, producing. But I'm, I'm also very much interested in the discussion that you were having there also with um, regards to what can um, professionals do or um, um, the industry at large um, in the future. And there are a couple of things that we, we also have been looking at and um, I very much agree with what uh, my, my colleagues here on the panel are saying. I, I think one of the most important thing um, for everyone at the moment is to diversify income. And I really think that this pandemic has really opened our eyes and, and, and that we're going to see some new ways of doing business. I think digital is going to be right at the forefront of um, everything that people do. Uh, even for us, for access, we are having to look at how can we really be almost have a digital first approach and i think this is really what we're going to see but even more importantly um, it is the quality of the digital content that we see and, and i think my colleagues may agree with me here that um some of the some of the content we are seeing is not really on you know uh, something that you can watch for a long time and, and there's really room for improvement I think these are the things that we're going to start seeing in the future. But for, for artists, uh, I think beyond diversifying income, it's also about looking for opportunities. Um, there are a lot of grants um, and opportunities um, across um, uh, the world, really. Artists use this time to, to, to find those opportunities, performing opportunities, um, or mobility funding, these kind of things, and really see themselves as um, admin people at this point. Uh, on the creative side, um, one colleague of mine said, we will likely get the best music that we have ever seen um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the coming months. And, and it's, the answer is pretty simple. It's, it's because artists are staying at home and most of them have heeded the call to, to create, create and create. So whether it's film, well, music, I think people are just writing and, and we're gonna see amazing things. So, that's perhaps something that people are not really talking about. I'm really looking forward to the festive season uh, because I really think that we're going to have some exciting um, uh, releases in the next few few months. Uh, is that to say that, um, just, just out of curiosity, before I let you go, I want to speak to Kiki. Is that to say that there's always been a tendency to rush production uh, for musicians when we're not locked down? Is that, is that what it means then? Well, you could see it like that. I think artists are always in this routine of playing shows and coming back and creating and writing and that kind of thing. But now, you know, a lot of the energy is now on creating new stuff. So you get more time um, and then create more. But perhaps more importantly, um, you know, uh, creatives tend to get out their best work when they're in a place of vulnerability. And, and, and I think this might inspire maybe more sincere um, um, creations, and, and that, that, that would be exciting to see. Great. Kiki, one of the things that I've heard people say, ex especially here in Ghana, is that just when our cinema culture looked like it was getting revived, just when we felt the need to step out to go watch movies, just when we started finding the reason to step out to go see comedy shows and other events, then we are hit with this. People are concerned about the movie industry in Ghana. There doesn't, there doesn't seem to be some ways to take advantage of what is happening because, of course, uh, there can be production. All we've seen is uh, theatre so far, at least we've seen uh, Glow uh, Productions do some virtual theatre. But people are very concerned about the movie industry here in Ghana. Are you worried about how you know, things have turned out for them? Well, I, um, I don't know how vibrant the movie industry in Ghana has been for the last couple of years. Um, I don't think it's been that vibrant. Um, but uh, again, um, um, coming back to what I said before, um, the, movie, the movie industry is, 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 is blessed with a lot of creative minds uh, here in Ghana and other places as well. And people just need to get creative. I mean, look, you have a whole... Um, violin orchestra if you watch this um certain tv networks you have a whole violin orchestra that have doing compositions at home um you have 25 musicians who are playing together by skype and record it and put together so you can create content even by being you just have to get innovative you just have to create 
um, you, you, you can, it, it's possible to make it happen. You, before this movie was shot, phone booth, um, Hollywood hadn't done anything like that, where the whole movie was done at one location with um, Forrest Whitaker. Um, a two-hour movie at one location that went crazy on, on the, um, um, uh, at, 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 at the, what do you call it? at sales. It, it did so well. So, again, I don't know, I, I'm not a fan of taking the back to and say, oh, we're in trouble. What do we do? There is opportunity in every situation. And um, for creative people, I think the sky is always the limit. No matter what it is, you are supposed to take advantage of the situation and bring out something new. I mean, look, even animation, animation exists, right? Mm. So it's possible. I, I wouldn't say I have all the answers, but again, it's just it's about thinking out of the box. We have no choice. We have no choice than to think outside the box. Quickly to Godwin, then we take your final words each. Um, Godwin, uh, Nollywood, uh, we know how huge it is, you know, in Africa, it's number one. Uh, you know, beyond Africa also, there's so much talk about Nollywood. I know there are lots of productions on Netflix and all that. But people are asking, how can local brands, you know, tap into this? How do we get local streaming uh, brands sorry, to also win uh, and get some money from streams and all that? When it comes to movies, actually. Well, I think I think um, in Nigeria there's there's Netflix, which has offered um, some producers and directors the opportunity to license their content mm. and make money. Um, I think Iroko TV has also been a platform. Um, I know DSTV has, you know, over the years paid artists, um, producers for their movies. So I think that. I think that the, the the opportunities are there, right? The, as as um, as uh, Eddie had mentioned, one of the problems is the quality of the of the platform and how 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 interested the quality of the product and how interested people are in watching whatever it is you're showing. Because if it's bad quality over a period of time, they're just going to get bored and go back to Instagram. Mm. So I think that there's there's uh, there are opportunities for everybody. Uh, to to take advantage of all the content that has been created already, they need to start looking for places to place that people want to watch. People are watching on YouTube. People are watching on Netflix. So I think you know, it. I don't think the issue is how to stream. I think the issue is the content being available to ensure that we're able to. To, to get people to speak. You have just one minute to tell us your final words. I know you've been hammering the fact that there are opportunities. It's just how you are able to package your content, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if there's anything else you want to add. I think the last, the final word I'll say is this, right? You don't, you don't prepare for war during war. You mm. prepare before. And for most people, they've spent a lot of their time not doing anything about preparing themselves for anything that might happen that may be in, that might have an adverse effect on their career or their business so that's what we're dealing with now so my advice to people is prepare yourself after this mess it's going to get a little harder so what you want to do now is figure out how best you can diversify for yourself. eddie let's take your final words what would you say to the african stars who are in a dilemma about what to do. Yes, we've talked about the fact that you need to create blah, blah, blah. But what are your final words to them? Only spend when it's absolutely necessary. Please, don't spend money. And create whatever will make you money after this. There is opportunity. This is not the end of the world. We are coming back very soon. So keep your, keep your, keep your finances in order. Try as much as possible to prepare for better finances and create create and create keep creating says eddie and kiki has the final words kiki let's hear you well look we have we have about 900 million um, smartphones sorry 800 million smartphones in africa we are well over 1.3 billion um we need to start working towards having a proper african industry not being local champions um, it's Netflix, our Netflix and all this is good. We need to have our own. We need to we need to support the Europa to become bigger. 
we need to support DSTV to become bigger, we need to support TV3 to become bigger. And then in situations like that, let's manage our own and let's support, let's, let's stop thinking as um, 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 individuals and our individual countries. We are, with, 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 a, with a population this big, I don't know what else you're looking for, was right under your nose right under our noses so yes this will be my last thing let's move towards having a proper african industry thank you very much i guess that that's a call for more collaborations among us as africans and i'm sure that this is an eye-opener for us we've done virtual concerts that have had each african country at most uh, in participation thank you very much gentlemen for joining me and kiki Bansin is uh CEO for Palm Media, and he's, again, a renowned uh, music manager. He's known to be the man who made Becca who she is today. And Godwin Tom uh, joined us uh, all the way from Nigeria. He's a talent manager, managed the likes of Whiskey, Davido, Waje, M.I., Prince, uh, Ice Prince, and a lot of them. And Eddie Hakichi, I hope I got it right. Uh, is South African yes. <laughs> and is the CEO of Music in Africa and organizer of ASUS. Thank you very much. We are glad that you made time to speak to us this morning. All right, so that'll be it for the conversation with the young men uh, this morning on the effects of coronavirus on African showbiz.